Hey YouTube, Kaiser Kaput here uploading another Ring of Pain video and this one is a beginner's guide so I'll be going through the very basics of this game and giving tips along the way so you can beat this unforgiving roguelike. I often get asked for my thought process when I'm streaming so I figured an uninterrupted video of me playing through runoff stream would be beneficial. I tried to keep this video as short as possible but there is quite a lot of strategy to cover and I hope you guys find this useful. Just a heads up, if you enjoy this video then hit the subscribe and bell button to be notified when my next video goes live. You can also find me on Twitch and Twitter. Details are in the description below. I'm a small streamer, but I'm already building a community playing a variety of games and we're especially having fun with Ring of Pain at the moment. All support is appreciated as the stream and YouTube channel continue to grow. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with the video. Right guys, first of all, you'll see that I've, um, I've played this game a lot. So hopefully this video will help you out and uh, allow you to, to reach the end and get a good successful run. So best way to do it we'll just jump straight in so this is the difficulty once you've completed the game you'll be presented with an additional difficulty but the don't want to give away too much but there's two bosses depending on which boss you kill you will unlock either a double candle or this um, this dark rock here but we're gonna for this for this particular run through we're gonna play on single candle which is the the easiest difficulty so we'll just go ahead and uh, and jump in so yeah, this is a, a roguelike card crawler game. There are 16 dungeons, or depths, uh, as they're referred to in-game. And then each time you exit out of one of these, uh, the enemies will become more uh, stronger, more varied. So yeah, let's go jump straight into it. So first of all, before I attack anything, I just want to take you through the UI. So I've got my timer up here in the top right if I was doing a, a speed run, which is one of the achievements. Uh, I've got souls. So souls, like it says here, will be spent on treasure. So this is the treasure here. At the beginning, you just get free treasure, uh, but later on you can get uh, treasure where it costs 20, 40, 75, and 140 souls. Uh, and based on based on the rarity, obviously the better, the, the more rare the item is, uh, the better it's gonna be. So we've got souls up here. Uh, coming on down here, we've got uh, health, obviously. Don't need to go into that too much. We've got attack, so that's how much damage I'm going to do to my enemy. And as it says here, my attack uh, minus the target's defense is the damage ideal. So for instance, I've got three attack. I'll click on this magnifying glass here. I can see this guy's defense. So he has one defense, three minus one, quick maths, two. So we're going to do two damage to this guy here. So it's minus two. But we'll carry on going through the, the UI first. He's got defense, so obviously flip it, uh, flipping on his head. That's the how much defense we have. So when this guy retaliates, he does four damage. I've got two defense, so he's going to do two damage in reply to mine. And you can actually see in the bottom left, uh, it shows, shows a little indication of how much damage he's going to do to me. So it says minus two in the bottom left next to my health. So next up we have speed. So the higher the speed um, decides who's going to attack first in combat. Uh, and like I says here, if it adds dodge and stealth chance as well. So my speed is four, his speed is three, so I'll attack first. And you can also quickly see who will attack first by this icon here. If you've got the uh, the, the sword icon here, it means I'm going to attack first. Next up, clarity. So yeah, like I says here, it boosts resource gain. So this is your, your souls. Uh, critical hit chance. Uh, when you come across potions, you'll heal for more and your curse resistance. So I'll show you this later on, but you'll come across these curse potions or the uh, curse stat boosts, and it actually improves your probability of either getting the stat boost or being healed with these curse potions. Critical hit chance, so it does double damage, and you can get this from items or from this clarity stat here. Then we have dodge chance. Again, you can get it from items, but it also is directly linked to your speed. So the higher this stat is here, the better chance you have of dodging an attack. Stealth chance, so again, you get this from items and it's also directly linked to your speed and this is when you can go ahead and pass a creature. So if I was to click this here, I can pass around this creature and I have a 22% chance of stealth and pass so you won't attack me. So, the, so in the bottom here, you've got all your equipment slots. So this is what we start off with, candle, because we're on the easiest difficulty. So we're given the 20% stealth chance. 
and this gives us one clarity as well. You can see the little clarity icon next to the card. And then we have all, all these different slots here, um, head, chest, gloves. Uh, I won't go through them all because I'm hoping this will be a, a fairly successful run. I'm going to try and keep this video fairly, fairly brief as much as I can. So you won't see me get to the end if I do even get to the end, but I'll, um, I'll keep the recording going as long as I feel like I'm actually teaching you guys something. So first off, first tip is always grab the treasure first because we could get an item in here, which will, you know, obviously boost our stats. So we'll open this up. So here we've got a choice. So we can either take the chest plate. They give us three extra defense. And if you hover over the card, it even tells you in the bottom left uh, the stats it's going to increase and decrease and also where it goes as well. Any effect we have here. So for this particular one, we take half damage from explosions, which is, which is pretty important to be honest. Um, we've also got another option here, timeless. So this is a an item that's got a cooldown. So we keep this, so we use it, and then after one one turn, when we've um, attacked once, we'll then be able to use this again. Uh, but And if we don't like what we see here, we can do a reroll set, and this costs souls. For the first one, though, this costs zero souls. Uh, but I'm happy with chest plate. I'm going to take this. So here we go. So because that chest plate actually reduced my speed from four to three, you'll have noticed, now when I go to attack this weaker creature, because out of the two I want to attack the weaker guy first, right? Because we want to explore around. Um, it now has a question mark. Now we have the same speed. We each have three speed. So it's a 50-50 chance as who's going to attack first. And you'll also see that his attack does four. My defense is five. So he's not going to do any damage to me at all because he also has no piercing damage. So I forgot to mention this earlier, but piercing damage will ignore your armor value. Okay, my armor's five. His attack is four. But if he had, so in theory he should do no damage. But if he had piercing damage as well, say it was one, he would have a chance, or he would well, be guaranteed to get through my armor. Okay, but the higher my defense, the better the parry chance I have. And this also combines with items later on as well. Um, so what we can, we can basically we can go ahead and attack this guy with with no consequences. It even shows in the bottom left I have a hundred percent chance to to parry. We parried. We hit again. He's dead. Okay. So these are the you have uh, four different types of potions: small health potion, large health potion, small curse potion, which I'll show you later, and the large curse potion as well. This is the large health potion, and as you can see, it's going to heal me for 11, so we can come back to this later. So now we're going to go ahead and attack this guy, and you'll see this is a different icon. It hasn't, it's not the sword icon, and this shows that his speed is higher, so he's going to attack first. So that's something to keep in mind if you're on low health. Uh, but we can go ahead and attack this guy. We can even have a look at his card as well. And the difference to this guy is he has piercing damage. So he's guaranteed to land... Uh, one one HP off of me. I'll attack him again. I have a, if you see in the bottom left, I have a twenty percent chance to parry this as well. There you go. He's dead. Okay. So we grab this treasure. So now I have a choice. Um, I don't want to go into individual items in this video, but don't take this. It's really bad. On the right here we have creepy doll so this goes in the jar slot so what we're actually going to do is i'm going to show you the reroll because i'm not happy with either of these so we're going to do a reroll and this is going to cost zero souls we currently have three so here we go this takes up the mask slot and it's going to give us one attack one defense one speed and one clarity so i'm going to, I'm going to pick this up this is a this is a good early mask so we're just going to go ahead Kill this guy. We we do three we do three attack damage, um, and the most he's going to do back to us is one. So this is one of the stat cards. This is going to increase my health by one. So we can go ahead and pick this up. And this is one of the explosive guys as well. So he's going to give us five souls. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to come back to him because I want to see what these are first. Okay, so we can go ahead, 
Kill this weak guy off. Kill this weak guy off. So if we attack him, he will blow up and he'll um, do three damage to us. But I can go ahead and do that because I know I've got this health potion waiting for me. Let's hit him. Med up. And this is your standard exit. So standard exits will take you to the next depth, um, a shop or uh, finders keepers where one of the uh, one of the characters will offer you an item. Um, but there are other exits you can take as well, and hopefully I can show you this later. So you go finders keepers. Here's the owl, and he's just going to give us this. So our stealth chance is going to go up by plus ten percent. It's good. Uh, extra attack and extra health. So I'll go ahead and take this. Okay, on to the next depth. So you see there's a new creature here. So this is also an exploder, but this guy is going to move around the ring towards me step by step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how we can safely detonate him. So what we'll do is we'll grab this treasure. I don't like either of these, so I'm going to re-roll. So ideally, I think early on, I really like to you know build up my base stats, my primarily my attack my defense and my speed. Um, health, not so much important. Clarity is good, but I feel like I, I really want to, I already want to boost my attack and my speed more than anything right now. These are both really good items, by the way. So what we're going to do is we are going to take Icebreaker. We're going to take Icebreaker. It's got, it gives us more stats. Um, these two would actually, um, these two actually synergize quite well, but we've only got a choice of one. So we'll grab Icebreaker. You see the icon above him here? It says next action he's going to move and prepare to self-destruct. So we're not going to attack him. We are going to just pass this card. He's going to follow us round. And now his next action is going to be self-destruct. So no matter what I do here, he is going to explode where he is right now. So what I can do is I can pass. And there you go, he's dead. Three souls. Gonna pick up this treasure. Um, okay, so this is a this is gonna be a useful early game item. Um, I'm actually gonna re-roll. So now, if you notice, the cost has gone up from zero to two to re-roll. So I'm gonna do it again because I wanna I wanna fill these empty slots. Here we go, ferocity. So this will give us two attack and plus ten percent crit chance. And this goes in our charm slot. So I'll pick this up. Okay. So we're going to pick up. This is a consumable item. So barrier. So this is here. It says here you take no damage next turn. So, we can, so we've got one, one, one time only use for this. So we're going to pick this up. So we, we can one hit this guy. Uh, but we'll take the damage first. So what I'm going to do first is... You know, actually, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit this guy. We're gonna wipe him out, no problem. And we got a 50-50 chance here to attack first. Again, speed's equal. He hit first, but it's not a problem. Our defense is pretty high at this point, so the most he can do is one damage, and we have a 30% chance to to parry it. We'll take this guy out as well. So this is a plus one to attack. Fairly straightforward. We'll pick this up. Health potion is going to heal for four. Sometimes it's worth just leaving. If you think you're going to take too much damage, just leave the guys. You don't have to. You don't have to wipe everything out on every on every uh, depth. So he's worth five souls, and our potion is going to give us four. So if I was feeling risky, I just hit him and move on. But you know what? I'm going to I'm going to pop the potion, and I'm going to get out. Um, I'm going to take the standard exit because this reprieve is going to take us to the owl and what this particular uh, depth will do will allow us to heal up. He'll offer us a few potions, um, but we don't, we're, you know, we're pretty well set up on health, so we're going to take the standard exit. If it was your first time playing the game you wouldn't see what that exit was by the way that'd have a question mark above it it's only because i've been to reprieve before that it tells me what it is so we've got two guys here we've got this exploder here the roaming fire bead 
And again, it tells us what his, uh, his action is going to be. So he's just going to keep following me. And then we've got the, um, the scrounger here. So he, his main role is he's got loot, so we want that. But he is going to race to the exit. So we want to kill him before he gets there. Bearing in mind that we're also going to be chased by this guy as well. Um, but what we can do, just to knock his health down at real early, is because we have this chest plate where we take half damage from explosions, I'm actually going to detonate this guy and take the, the full force of it. It's only two health. So yeah, we're going to do that. And now because we've got 20, 22 souls, we can, we can, uh, we're going to attack this guy actually. We're going to, there you go. Okay. We get the health stat. We get the health. So this is what I mentioned earlier. So this is a chance to either be cursed or we get a plus one stat increase to a random stat. They can't kill you. So if you're on one health, you pick these up every day. Uh, but this is all based on your clarity. So the higher your clarity, the better the chance you have of not being damaged. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait. I'm going to use that. If we are going to use it, we're going to use it last. Uh, so let's push on round, see what else we have. So these are a couple of the other depths. Got Fountain of Life and Ambush. Again, another common um, chest with 20 souls. Okay, what we've got here is another another new type of enemy. So he's going to attack first. We're going to kill him, but he's also going to inflict poison damage on us. And so that's damage over time. You see in the bottom left, he's got a, a piercing damage um, of one. And we've got a 40% chance to parry that. But he's also going to, he's guaranteed to give us one poison. Um, but we're, we're going to go ahead and hit him. We're going to kill this guy. Again, our speeds, our speed could be better. If it was higher, we'd be one hitting all these. And not taking damage at all unless they're doing poison. Um, so we have now cleared everything here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this guy for the five souls because I know I've got a potion over here. And we are going to leave. We're going to leave this stat because it's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth leaving this on one health. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this treasure up. These aren't particular. neither of these are particularly good, so we're going to re-roll for zero souls. We are, oh, we've got so many empty slots, so I really want to re-roll for something that's going to benefit me. Re-roll again. Okay, we're going to take this, purely because we've got the extra attack. Clarity's okay. Um, effect, the effect is, it's okay. It's okay. Um, Right now, that would trigger plus 10% crit chance if attack is higher than your current health. So attack is higher than my um, current health. So this 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 would work. So I've got the extra critical hit chance. So we're gonna grab we're gonna grab the health, and we're going to take. I'm gonna show you guys ambush. So this is one of the dungeons. Like I said earlier, if it's a dungeon you or a depth you haven't visited before, this will have a question mark. Let's go and take a look. So ambush is set up so the creatures will keep coming at you, and then you're guaranteed this uh, this health. Sorry, not this health. This treasure at the end of it. So there's no exit. It's you die or they die. So that was a 50-50 roll with speed, and we attacked first. We lost that one. Kill this guy. Easy enough. So now we've just picked. We're looking at our first blue item. So we're going to re-roll this. Oh, decisions, decisions. We are going to... You know what, we're going to... We're going to pick this up. We're going to pick up the Hand of Dog. Only because we could end up re-rolling and then not really improving our stats. And so this is um, this is the shop. So I've got 10 souls. I can spend 25 if I had them on uh, plus one to my speed or 30 on a, on a new helmet. Can't afford either, so we take the health potion. 
Now I'm on depth four. But as we keep going each depth, eventually you'll come to the end and then you'll fight, fight a boss. So first thing I always do is I have a look and I see what's coming towards me, um, what's the biggest threat, and I'll be able to go into a little more detail uh, when I get further further through this run. So I'm going to pick up this blue loot. So these, these gloves are really useful because they can knock creatures back once you hit them. Really good for the exploders. But I'm going to re-roll for a different item. Let's, we need to, we want to fill these empty slots up. They're doing nothing for us at the moment. So I'll re-roll. So we've got a choice. Do we have a bit more defense and health and dodge chance? Or do you want a bit more speed? So we can attack first. Extra clarity. So the potions heal for more. And we've got a better chance of picking up those cursed potions and not taking the damage. And again, dodge chance. So I feel like, I feel like my speed could redo the boost. So we're going to pick up the Shadow Hood. So now we can... We would be killing this in one hit, but what we've got is a Hand of Dog. So we actually pet the dog. <laughs> um, and now, as you'll see, I've just primed this, uh, this Roaming Fire Bead to explode, so we can now pass this card. There you go, it's blown up. So snakes, these, one of my most hated creatures because they've got such high speed. They poison for a lot, so this is going to do uh, three poison damage. But we have to, we have to take it, so we're going to hit him. And we're going to pick up this chaotic healing as well. It's a one-time use thing. 75% chance to heal for four. Alternatively, it's got a, a one in four chance of uh, exploding five damage so I'll pick this up so we've got shuffle prism so this, this, this would shuffle all the cards we've got an exploder here and what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look and see what this is over here so the best thing to do for me here is to just hit this uh, exploding guy up here and that will take him out and this guy out so we're going to do that for the sake of three health it's worth it We've got 11 souls from that. Uh, Burial Grounds is another one of the other depths you can go through. Uh, but I'm going to take the standard exit. Like I said, guys, this is just a, a beginner's guide. Otherwise, it will be really, really long. Really, really long. I'm trying to cut this down as much as I can. But whilst giving you decent information. So here we've got a high defense guy. We've got an exploder coming our way, the Roman fire bead, another one over here. And we've got this is um this guy here who will actually eat other creatures and get stronger and stronger. So we have to be wary of him. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push towards him as early as possible. Before he gets too strong. So you see here, so this is he's gonna self-destruct. Um and we can pass this guy, and we've actually got, a, because of our defense, we've got a 50% chance to parry if he gets a hit on us. Didn't work out, but it's okay. So now we're gonna just finish this guy off. So we know that we, we can move left, he's gonna follow us around, and then on the turn after that, he's going to, um, he's going to detonate. Okay. So we go around, we take a look, we see what we're up against. It's our first purple item. So I'm going to re-roll. I'm not happy with these. This is really good. And we're going to pick it up. Not the health, not so fussed about. The clarity is nice, but it's this deal two light damage to all creatures when you take damage. So we're gonna pick this up, and we what we're gonna do here is we've we know we've got a consumable up here, the bear trap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our consumable here, take no take no damage next turn, detonate this guy. He's gonna explode. We took no no damage. Now we can um, we can pick this up. We can pick up this, this, so this is going to go into our jar slot. Freeze closest four cards when hit, and it's got three uses on it. So I'll pick this up. 
we can heal up and we have just enough to use this treasure although we won't have enough for uh, any rerolls but we can pick dark pants up okay so again he's moving towards me he's moving towards me there's nothing really else for me to worry about at this stage so what we're going to do Ah, introduce you guys to this spitting guy right here. So he's going to do one one damage uh, when I'm in a range of three to him. So just something to bear in mind. But what we're going to do is we are going to push right now and we're going to try and take this little guy down. Forgetting that every time I get hit, I'm going to freeze the four closest cards. Okay. Did you see that, guys? So I took damage. So I activated this. So deal two light damage to all creatures when you take damage. Um, so we're just going to keep... We're going we're gonna to move. We're going to leave that stat for now. That guy was damaging me. Finish him off. Now we can pick the stat up. Uh, let's go have a look at this treasure. So this particular guy, he's, he goes into like this vulnerable state, which is the best time to attack him. And then when he's got his spikes up, that's when you want to leave him alone. But you can literally just pass left and right until he's back into this state again for the easy kill. He's dead. Finish him off. And we're, um, we're good. So we're going to go, we're going to take the standard exit again. So have the shop. Generally, I'll just take the potion. More often than not, there's nothing really worth spending your souls on in there. Unless it's something you really want in later game. So now on depth seven. Okay, so this is similar to the roaming um, exploder, but this, this guy is going to do poison damage. And we've also got this guy over here to uh, worry about, so he's going to move towards me as well. And they're, they're reasonably hard hitting as well, so we just need to you know, keep in mind about him. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lead this guy around to the right here because we know it's safe. There's health, there's treasure, health. Um, this is probably a shuffle prism. So we're just going to lead this guy around once more. So we're going to push back this way. So now we're going to let him do some of the work for us. So we're going to attempt to stealth. We did stealth, but he still attacked us. But now he's got minus three poison on him. But what we can do is we can just let him let him die now. So every turn, he's going to take damage, minus two now, and he's dead. Just keep on pushing around. A lot of time, guys, it's just thinking it through. I'm trying to slow this right down so you guys can understand what I'm doing here. But you just, just take your time, uh, plan what you're going to do. Constantly look around, see if there's anything that's moving towards you. Uh, you know, just keep in mind any health potions that are around. Sometimes is it worth taking the damage to kill everything, or do you just need to get out? Sometimes you just got to bail. So he he spat on me. He took two damage. He's going to do it again. I dodged it this time, and he's dead. Okay, so we are going to we're going to going to keep the bear trap for now and as you notice guys because my clarity is going up and up you'll see in the bottom left and in my health bar I think it's a 60 40 chance in my favor to be healed with these um these cursed potions now still not worth it right now not for the amount of health I've got but obviously the the less health you've got uh the more worthwhile it is uh, and we're going to take crossroads here so we're going to have a choice of where we go So now I'm presented with the choice. We've got standard, we've got patience, companions, and ambush. So companions is a real safe route to go down. It's just got like sort of dogs and cute little guys in there. You just kill them and that's it. Get out, easy souls. But we want loot. 
We want good loot. We're gonna go ambush again. Okay, so I'm always bearing in mind what what I can uh, attack first, what I can kill off first. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this bear trap because this guy he's got such such a lot, um, so much defense. Sorry, that we're better off rather than just trading blows with him. We're just gonna kill him in one. Now his friends backed him up, so we can kill this guy off. And every, just bear in mind, obviously, with my build at the moment, every time I get hit, I'm dealing two light damage to everything. And there we have it. And we're going to take the living helmet. So we're increasing our defense, increasing our clarity by quite a lot, and heal two on kill. This is really good, guys. I'm going to grab this. Finders keepers, so here we go. Being offered this free of charge so no reason for us not to pick this up there's no negative stats on it just bear in mind guys there's some some items will will just kill you they're not designed to particularly help you they might have an effect that sounds okay but you just gotta you gotta wait up don't be don't be um don't be scared to discard if it doesn't sound good so you guys what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave it there um this guide's going on way longer than i thought it would do but I really hope this has helped just initially. If you guys have got any questions on anything that I've covered or any suggestions on other videos you'd like to see, then just put that down in the comment section below. Uh, but until next time, I'll uh, catch you in the next one.